Hi, I'm Tracy from Do Yoga With Me. And this is a fun little workshop we put together called Chatting Chaturanga. How to successfully find the flow where we move through high plank, down to low plank, engage the core to roll over the toes to upper facing dog and back to downward facing dog. There's a few little details in there, so have some fun. And thanks for playing. Namaste. We're going to begin in Varasana. And I'd love you to lift up a little and squeeze the heels together, pressing the toenails down. So when you lift up, you can sit your glutes, the sit bones, right on the heels. So you find that element of lightness and soften through the tailbone. This tutorial is geared toward chaturanga. When we speak to chaturanga, we speak to a lightness in the side body, of course, a connection to the core, a strength in the arms, but a lift of the front spine to open the chest. So when we get into all of these places, that initial lightness that we find is through the side body long, the heart, and of course, a little bit of playfulness in the wrists. So we're gonna warm up first by bringing those arms up into the air and stretch the fingers nice and tall. And then place the hands just out in front so that you have a wrist shoulder stack. Pull the shoulders back. And then crisscross the hands and then take the interlace and that crisscross. From here, you can pull the shoulders back again, soften the tail, and then just pull the hands in and extend them open. You're gonna get a couple of things happening. You're gonna get a stretch through the wrists, a little bit of space through the shoulders, and you might have the desire to get off those heels. But I want you to stay there, light on the heels, lift into the core, take a breath. And then unwind, pause, lift and take the opposite way. So you have that interlace. Use that interlace, pull the hands in, and again, just extend out and open. Soften the tail, come back, and if you're familiar with Mula Bandha, the connection from the perineum, the pelvic floor draws in, up, and Uddiyana Bandha, the low ribs in. And then gently release the hands. From here, keep the palms touching without the interlace. Draw the arms up overhead, take the breath, find space. And then as you exhale, you can release the hands down to the side of the body. Bringing yourself now into your tabletop shape and walking your knees about an inch, maybe inch and a half behind your hips. These four points, and we have strong hands. You've got knees underneath your shoulders. When we look at the hands and you look at the wrists, we wanna have a crease line of the wrist below the shoulder always. And then looking at the hands, you want to have the base of the index fingers rooted. So when you lift up the palms, you're unstable. When you have fingers spread, you're more stable. And when you deeply connect the base of the index finger, the thumbs up, you can actually pull the pressure point off your wrists and lift it up into the shoulders and then align that stability right down through the midline. So we call all of that hugging into the midline and toning through the belly. So let's stay with that imprint you've just made and fine tuning the biceps in the direction forward and the shoulders snuggle back and curling all 10 toes under. From here, gently, gracefully lift your hips up and then lower the heels down toward the mat and then just find this downward facing dog just to warm up. And as you find this space in down dog, this inverted V shape, let's lift one heel and then press the opposite heel to the mat. So Find this length, this direct feed to square hips, and then come back to the access point in the base of your index fingers strong. And as you stay in that imprint, find your low ribs in, take a breath, and we're gonna change sides. So lifting the other heel and pressing that reverse down. Same thing, tailbone skyward, heel pressing down, biceps rotating up and shoulder blades sliding. And take the breath. Empty the lungs. Then inhale to lift both your heels high and bright. And on the exhalation, lower the knees down to the mat. In a pause here, and in a gentle quarter turn, take your wrists so that they're under your shoulders, but looking toward each other, fingertips looking to the edge of the mat. And you can keep the toes curled under. And then finding that core, it's gonna make a few circles in the shoulders. And you can bring your weight back to the hips. And you can slide forward. And you're noticing that you can transfer a little bit of a balance from one to the other, but you're still drawing that balance equally to the center. Shift the opposite direction. So you go from one side toward the other side and you bring that playfulness back. One more time, forward and back, and then bring that playfulness back. From here, pause, turning the fingertips in the direction now of your 
knees and to wake up the wrists in the full tone. And then to untuck your toes and then shift weight. You got a little additional stretch here. Just one breath in and one breath out. Shift the shoulders to stack above the wrist, turn the fingertips forward, imprint the base of the index finger. And from here, pull the toes under, lift up, and press all the way back to downward facing dog pose. Let's take a nice inhale and then stay for the exhalation. From here as we glide to high plank pose and finding your first entranceway into chaturanga, you want to really find this foundation where your hands are underneath your shoulders and again you're looking always for the crease lines of your wrists to be stacked there. And then from here, outer shoulder width this part is nice. So when the hands are too close together, you've got this squishiness in the chest. And if your hands are too far apart, you don't have enough stability. So you want to have those hands under your shoulders. You can even play with walking them in and walking them out. And then you find this structure point, this very high and strong plank of wood. And as you send the heels in the direction of the back of the mat, you're going to lift the front thighs and tone the lift of the inner thighs to the sky so that you could actually be here while I chatter and chatter and chatter for a long time. Now for a moment, lower the knees down to the mat and pull the ankles up so that you've got a crisscross of the ankles. Keep the structure of the hands as they are and then lean the chest slightly forward, almost as if you're taking a cow belly breath, but squeeze the ankles together so that you find the tone and the connection to the core. From here, as you reach the heart forward, snuggle the elbows in and lower yourself halfway and then press down and bring yourself all the way back up. Take one more breath in and then squeeze the ankles and lower yourself halfway and come all the way back up. So there's a bit of a difference because you're plugging into your core, undo, and then cross the ankles the reverse way. Squeeze the ankles, reach your heart forward, pull the shoulders from the ears and lower halfway. Come back up. One more time, inhale to prepare and then lower yourself halfway, exhale. Coming back up, pause, unwind. Plug the toes down, lift your kneecaps up, and there's your plank pose. And from here, we're going to go up and back to downward facing dog, just to carry the rest in and to carry the rest out. Take one more cycle, empty out the lungs, and then lift the heels to lower the knees. Keep the heels and the toes as they are, parallel lines, and come back and sit on those heels. So you can give the wrists again that little bit of a space that you can twist them out. You can even take the thumbs inside and then wrap the fingers around and you get a little bit more of a stretch through the wrists. You can take a breath in that freedom. Exhale fully. And then release and place the hands back out in front so that as you come back to your tabletop shape, you can lift your knees and this time you're right away in your high plank pose. Now we begin to feel what this feels like to support. So from high plank pose, you've got the feet hip width apart. When we move through chaturanga, you inch slightly forward to the toes. There's your core. And you can pull yourself back a little bit. You can inch yourself forward. And you can pull yourself back. This time we're going to flow through it. So as you inch yourself forward, notice that as you lower yourself down to the mat, you can sink or you can stay strong. But as you lower yourself down to the mat, you're going to pause. And then pushing the toes away, Roll and lift the heart forward. You need to pull from the belly in, up, pull the shoulders back. And then again, mula bandha, pulling the core up to float over those toes. And find yourself back in a downward facing dog pose. And take the breath in. And stay for the breath out. Let's take an inhale. And let's take a nice long exhale. Next inhale, you're going to glide forward again to your high plank pose. And then noticing in high plank, as you reset, and of course with repetition, we build strength, but also with repetition, we build muscle memory. So when we have this line, and you're looking from the base of the skull right to the tailbone, tone the front thighs, lift the inner thighs, and that's your high push-up pose. Now in preparation to lower, you inch forward. Now press the hands down a little more and find a very soft doming between the upper back. When you're on the very tips of the toes, you've got that hollow belly, navel back body, and to lower yourself down. And as you lower yourself down to pull the shoulders back, so you get more space across the collarbones. From here, core, push through the toes. So as the tops of the feet press down, you lift and open the heart. Upward facing dog, one breath in. And then again, from the root, lift up, float over those toes, and come back to downward facing dog pose. 
Now take the breath in and stay for the breath out. Lift the heels, inhale, and come back down to child's pose as you exhale and invite the rest in. Let's empty the lungs. And then stay here in child's pose and creep those hands a little further forward. There's some beautiful cues that we can find to set our stance. And of course, all of us are individual in what our length and proportions are with our arms and our legs and our torso. But when we spaciously extend the arms forward, keep the imprint to the base of the index fingers and then glide yourself up to your tabletop. Without losing where the hands were, just draw the knees parallel. Curl the toes under, and then lift up and press back to downward facing dog pose. So a beautiful setup for your downward facing dog coming up from child's will give you that beautiful setup into your high plank to glide through chaturanga. So as you glide into high plank pose, notice the proportions now that the shoulders are again well above the wrists. You have a stack, the fingers are spread. If I were in the room with you, I would not be able to pull your fingers off the mat. That's how strong they are. Now pressing down, plug your shoulders and have that gentle soft doming between the shoulder blades. Tone your thighs, inch forward to the toes. As much as you inch forward to the toes, pull the shoulders back and then belly is in, navel back body to lower down to a place where you hover from the earth. Open the collarbones, slide the shoulder blades, push the toes away and lift your heart up and over. So you've got that space and up dog, strong connection to core and then Mula Bandha lifts you up and back to downward facing dog pose. Take a nice inhale and then a nice long exhale. To lift the heels, inhale, lower the knees all the way down and as you exhale, cross the ankles from behind. Take your time to roll over your feet and then allow yourselves to just rest here with the legs all the way extended out in front. We're gonna play and just give your shoulders a little bit of a stretch. So when we work in Chaturanga, we really work with the development around the shoulder, the deltoid, and we also take the chest, but we also work the upper back through the thoracic cavity. So it's nice to unwind, if you're workshopping this at home, to take that time to unwind as much as we prepare the pose, that we release the pose. So anything that's comfortable for you. Cross-legged variation, one ankle in front of the other. You're gonna bring your arms again out in front, but this time you're gonna bend this right elbow and just take the base of the skull so that you've got an elbow shoulder, same height. And you can lift that elbow, so you've got a little bit of playfulness here, and you've still got the knitting of the ribs and the freedom through the shoulder. The right palm can hold the area between the shoulder blades, and then the left hand can trickle its way down to the mat. And then from there, if you wish, you can bring the left elbow behind, and you can find this gentle grip, we call these cow face arms, where you might have a connection of the fingers, maybe you're just holding the shirt, but you can open the shoulders, so very much about getting in the collarbones, softening the tail, and keeping the space, the side body open. Take this breath. And stay to empty the lungs. Now to find that neutral place in the shoulders, you can slide the left hand down to the mat, fingertips, and carry the right arm up. Take the breath here, and then slide the right hand behind your back, and walk the left hand to hold the outside edge of your right near thigh. So gentle twist, inhale to grow tall, and with the exhalation, begin to look over the right shoulder. Take one more breath and root down to rise tall, inhaling, and a little bit deeper on the exhalation. Slow return, bring it all the way back to center. You can take this right hand over top of your left hand now. So you just hold the thighs, maybe even the knees, lift on the inhale, and you're gonna reverse the curl now. So pulling everything in, chin, chest, rounding the shoulders forward. Maybe you have space to walk your hands further out, and then just enjoy the release the opposite direction. One breath. Stay again for the full exhale and then ragdoll yourself all the way back up. Same thing on the opposite side, as the arms float up and overhead, side body grows, you're absorbing the breath, you're elevating the rib cage, bring the arms in front, bend the left elbow, base of the skull, take the right hand to plug the shoulder back, and then in that lift, you have the space where the left hand is open and you're holding that area between the shoulder blades where that doming effect just was. Root down, keep the elevation. If you're happy, you stay, or you release the right hand down, tent the fingertips. 
going deeper. The right hand can wrap behind, and then you find that space again where maybe you've got a grip, but the fingertips can just hold, and the rotation across the chest. So noting the balance points when we find or when we workshop certain poses that we have stability in these strong areas where we work them with repetition, especially that of the shoulders. Take one more breath. And on the release, relax right hand to the mat, left hand to the sky. And as the left hand comes down behind you, walk the right hand now to the outside edge of your left thigh. Rooting down, lift taller as you breathe in. And then begin to just gaze over the left shoulder as you breathe out. One more cycle, inhale. And one more full cycle on the exhalation. Gently bringing that left arm forward and crossing now the hands in the opposite direction. You've got that same action where you can lift and open up the heart in preparation to curl in this time. So chin to chest, walk your hands a little wider and allow the shoulders to gently soften inward. Take one more deep breath and stay for the exhale. Slow release, ragdoll yourself all the way back to be seated tall. Bring your hands together at your heart. Thank yourself for playing in Chaturanga. Namaste.